quick, I'm going to go through this word processing. What I want to do first is I want to go to my Google Drive. I would probably want to go to my folder for CI 101, and I'm going to create a document. If I create it in the folder, then it's shared in the folder automatically. So I create the document. And then up here at the top where it says Untitled Document, I am going to click on that so I can rename it. I want to name this Word Processing underscore 101 underscore, and then depending on the day of the week, if it's Thursday, you'll put an R. If it's Tuesday, you'll put a T. And if it's Wednesday, you'll put a W. And then my last name, you'll put your last name and then your first initial. So this is only good for me. So I've named my document. And you'll notice by default that it is private. So I need to click on the blue share button. And where it says private, I'm going to change that to being public on the web or whatever level of sharing you feel comfortable with. And then it's already shared with Mrs. Keeler gmail.com because I'm sharing it with myself. So um, please share it with me. I'm going to share a Keeler at mail.fresnostate.edu, but I don't ever check that email. But please make sure that you uncheck the notify people via email. Please uncheck that because I would prefer not getting a whole bunch of emails. Don't forget you're sharing with Mrs. Keeler at gmail.com. That is what you're sharing with, Mrs. Keeler at gmail.com. Okay. Um, you would share and save, okay, and hit done. And then once you're in here, you're going to make some sort of a worksheet or document, but I have in the directions for today that this is, whoops, wrong site. Um, these are the directions, so I copied them. I'm just going to paste them. When I paste something, I always push enter a whole bunch of times. And then I put my cursor in the middle so that I have room above it and below it so it doesn't mess up my formatting. So I made it visible. I renamed it. Um, and then I'm supposed to have some sort of bulleting. So first thing I'll do is um, I'll call this my quadratic equations worksheet. I'm going to highlight it. And you'll notice what up at the top is called the WYSIWYG toolbar. So I can choose and I can make the font size bigger. I can choose to make it bold. I can center it and do those kinds of things. And then I'll say directions. And I'll probably want to do either a bulleted list or a numbered list. So I have bulleted and numbered. I'll go ahead and do bullets. Use pencil. And then I'm going to push enter. No calculators. And then I will say Please work with a partner. And then I'm going to push enter again, and it's going to make a new bullet automatically. But if I push the tab key, tab, it actually bullets in only one partner. Equal work together. No copying. And so you notice as I push enter that it makes the sub bullet automatically. So now I still have a sub bullet, and if I want it to go back, I'm going to hold down the shift key hold down the shift key and push tab. So shift tab puts the bullet back. Um, show all work. Okay, so then I need to insert a table. So I'm gonna do table, insert table. So you'll see up at the top it says, it says table, insert table. And I'm gonna make um, three columns. And then I wanna resize. If you'll notice as I come to the edge where the where the border is, as I hover over the border, the cursor changes. So once the cursor changes to this, I can drag the lines because I'm going to do problem one, problem two, problem three, and problem four. And then over here, it can be where the answer is. So here's where I'll write my questions, and that's where I'll put my answer. Now, if you're a math person, I'm just doing a sample here. I'm not actually putting any real questions in. You should do real questions for yourself. I'm going to go up here to the top. And under insert, I can insert an equation. So I'm going to go ahead and insert an equation. And it actually, if you know LaTeX, you can um, use LaTeX code. Oops, let me go in there and get the denominator. So you see I can stop it. Usually I can do, um, ah, why is this being funky on me? Come on. 
All right, well, there's some way that I can do the denominator that I've done 100 times, and for some reason I just can't get in there. All right, anyway, I can make fractions and square roots and different things by choosing new equation, but first I had to go insert equation up on the toolbar. Okay, so when I'm in there, sometimes what I really like to do is to have a two-column layout, and unfortunately in a Google table you can't really do a two-column layout. So when I go table, insert table, I'll put do my two columns, uh, but then what I'm going to do, so here is stuff, here is other stuff, yep, 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 yeah, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the table. And when I highlight the table, I can right click, two fingers on a Mac, and I right click and I can choose table properties. Table properties. So when I choose table properties, I can change the table border. By default, the border is black, so I can go ahead and change the border to being white. And it's going to erase the table, sort of. Like, now it's an invisible table. So I'm going to highlight that again. I'm going to go to table properties. And notice all the different things I can do. I can change the column widths and the height width. I can change the alignment, center alignment, but I can also change the cell colors. So maybe in this first one, if I right click, table properties, I'll make the cell color gray just so that it would stand out. And maybe in this one, table properties, I'll make the cell color red. So I'm able to make each cell a different color. So you'll notice when I wanted the whole thing, I highlighted the whole table. But when I wanted just one cell, I just clicked the one cell. I could also select two cells, table properties, and I'll select the background color to be yellow and the border to be orange. So you'll notice that the border color affects the entire table but that the cell color, just the cells that were highlighted. So just something to kind of keep in mind. So to make the invisible table, I just make the borders white. And that allows me to do a two column layout if you're wanting to do a two column layout. Okay, so this is kind of something cool. If I right click, excuse me, if I go insert, format, tools, one of these, tools, research, and under research, I can actually search for things. So if I look up cat, it's going to show me research information on cat. So I can drag it, and it's going to put a link to that article. But if you notice, there's a little drop down arrow here next to the word that I type, next to the G. And that allows me to search for things in particular. Like I don't want all of the web results, I just want pictures. So then now I have pictures of cats, and I, that's a cat and a dog but I can just drag them over. And the other cool thing about that is when I do it, you'll notice it automatically puts in the um, attribution to it, like where it came from. It makes footnotes for you so that um, you're not violating copyright. These are images that are available for copyright and, and they're just in there. So that's kind of cool. Helps you to to keep that. I need to put an image in there. So once I have an image in, if you take the corner and you drag the image, you can resize it. Right? I can resize it with the corner. Right? And then I need to insert a drawing. So I'm going to push enter a few times here. Under the insert menu, insert drawing, insert drawing. So I'm going to insert a drawing. And, well, you know, I'm trying to do parabolas, so I'm just going to make some lines. It's basically like paint, so I'll make my X, Y axis. And then you'll notice right next to here, there's a little arrow. Anytime you see one of these little arrows, it means there's more options. So I'm going to choose to do a curve. Let's see how good of a parabola I can make here. It's going to be a pretty ugly looking one. And I have some different options up here. I can change the line color and make it green. I can make it thicker. Um, I can make it a dashed line if I wanted to. And then here I can choose the ends. So I can make the ends of my line be arrows, escape. And I didn't want that, so I'm going to go to the line, click on it, delete. Um, so anyway, I can just make my drawing and inserts in there. If I click on it once, you notice the handles show up and so I am able to 
reduce the size on that. Let me insert another drawing just for fun. Insert drawing. And I'm going to insert shapes. I'm going to insert a circle. Now notice when I make a circle, it's not looking very circly. So I'm going to insert a circle. I'm going to hold down the shift key. If you hold down the shift key, it makes a perfect circle. So I'm able to insert a drawing, click the corner, resize it. Um, we did an equation. I'm going to insert a page number. So under the insert me menu, notice the things that I can insert. I can insert comments, footnotes, horizontal lines, and page numbers. So I'm going to put page number at the bottom of the page. And I'm going to change the margins because right now they're one inch all around. So I go file, page setup, file, page setup. And notice all my margins are one inch, so I'm going to make it 0.2. Make them visibly smaller. Ah, there we go. Smaller margins. And then, here's something that's really cool. At the very top, I can actually insert a table of contents. So I go insert, table of contents. And there's nothing in there because what you need to do is you need to make some of your text See up here in the toolbar where it says normal text? You gotta use the headers. You can't just change the way it looks. So I'm gonna make this heading one. Then I'm gonna come down here to my yep, I guess. And I'm gonna make it heading two. And I'm just looking for some different text. Make a Google document. I'll make that one heading three. I'll do the make it visible. I'm just messing around right here. I'll make it heading two. So I want to label. I want to highlight the text to make them headings. Now, when I go back up to the top, you'll notice the table of contents is still the same. But if I click on it, and then you see the refresh button to update. If I update it, it automatically creates and this hyperlinks down to that part of the document. So if you do your outline using the headings, highlight your headings, and you insert the table of contents, it will automatically create the table of contents. Now, notice when I make this. I'm going to make it heading four. When I come back up here to the table contents and refresh, then what I just highlighted and made a header shows up in the table contents. And it is indented according to its level. So uh, a heading of one is all the way to the left, and a heading of two is indented under, a heading of three is indented under that, and four is, you see how indented in this is because it was heading four. So anyway, something to mess with. So give those a try and see how good of a worksheet you can make. Good luck.